Hello everybody. I have a profound love of Minecraft. I've played it for years on end, but today I want to show you one of my favorite parts of this game. Redstone. The problem with redstone is that people tend to avoid it because it is too confusing or strange or utterly alien to them. Surely they don't have the big brain time enough to handle it, right? Well, starting today, I would like to try and clear up some of the confusion around redstone. Today I'm starting a series of videos detailing the basics of Minecraft's logic system. The goal of the series is to impart redstone knowledge and hopefully some inspiration onto you. I plan to build up a guide to digital logic using Minecraft's redstone as a platform for learning, as I find that stuff very interesting. But that will wait for another time. Today we start with the absolute basics. So let's get into it. So first we'll begin with the very basic components of the redstone here. This is the redstone ore. If you're playing a survival game, you will get redstone by mining this underground. Right? Interesting notes about the redstone ore block. If you step on it, or right click it after it's stopped, it will produce particles and it will actually emit light, although there's enough light here that you can't really see that part. All right. Next, we have the actual redstone dust. This is what you get from mining the redstone ore. And we can place this down on the floor like wires. When you place it by itself, it just forms this little dot, and when you place it together, it forms wires, and they connect all over the place. We'll talk more about this in just a little while. All right. Next up is the redstone torch. We can place it like any other regular torch. We can place it on the walls. Uh, obviously, we can't place it on the bottom of a block, but we can place it on the floor and on the walls. All right. Now, the interesting thing about redstone torches is they provide power. All right. We'll, again, we'll cover the properties of these a little more later. And the third most important redstone component is the redstone repeater. Redstone repeater, you can place it down, and if you right click it, that torch on the right hand side moves to the right. Uh, as you can see, there are four levels of the redstone repeater, and what these do are provide different amounts of delay to your circuit. So the further back the torch goes, the more delay it provides. Again, we'll talk about this more later. The other main use for a redstone repeater is that it takes a weak signal and makes it back into a strong signal. Notice how the signal is bright here and dimmer here, but then it's bright again after the repeater. So, last but not least, we have the redstone block. The interesting thing about the redstone block is it acts like a redstone torch, except it's a full block, you can place it anywhere. All right, so with that in mind, let's move on. So out here, I've set up a little demonstration. Uh, these are a whole bunch of different things that can be powered by redstone to do different things. So first and foremost, let's just flick the lever and see what happens. As I flick the lever, you'll see all of these things have activated. And if I turn it off again, they'll all deactivate. So redstone will open doors, open trap doors, it will turn on the powered sorts of rails, it'll activate repeaters. Uh, you can't see it very well from over there, I can activate it again from here though, and that way we'll see. If I power the redstone right here, you can see it actually turns off the redstone torch. We'll talk more about that in a little while. It also powers the comparator, uh, it'll lock this hopper so no items will go through, it'll push the pistons. And it'll fire the droppers, turn on the light, and play the note block sounds. So there's a lot of things it can do. A lot, a lot of things. All right. So from there, let's talk about some of the properties of redstone. So first and foremost, I have here my redstone dust. As I said before, if I place down a single one, I get this little dot. And if I place down more than one, I'll get a wire. So. I place down a redstone torch, as you've seen, it powers it. So it starts glowing, and it looks like this. Now, if I continue this on and on and on, eventually I will run out of power. So as you can see right here, this piece of wire is no longer sparkling and glowing. So it is out of power. The power only stretches for these 15 blocks. We can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so the 16th block is dark. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if we 
go all the way to the end here and place a repeater, it will make the signal strong again. The repeater is just there to, uh, in this instance, to make the wire go further. Now, let's talk about some other things. If I were to place down a redstone like this and power it, I can actually grab a redstone lamp here and show what's being powered by this redstone. So first of all, you will note that things to the side of the dust do not get power. This lamp does not turn on. But if I place it here, the wire is running into the lamp, and so the lamp turns on. Now, this leads us to a discussion about power from redstone. So redstone dust will power blocks around it in a very specific way. So if I run my line of redstone here, and I'll just power it with that torch, we already have seen that it will power the lamp that it goes into. Now another thing is that this power in this lamp is strong power. So when I say that, there are three types of power in a block. There is a strong power, a weak power, and a pushing power. So redstone dust will never provide a pushing power. It will only provide strong or weak signals. So the signal in this block is a strong signal, meaning that this block also provides power to the blocks around it like this. If I were to place a redstone lamp right here, it's also powered because the power passes through this block one because it is a strong signal. And likewise, any lamp I place around that first lamp will be powered. But if I were to go one block further, since this lamp is weakly powered, it will not receive any power. Now then, as mentioned before, if I place it on the side of the dust there, I get no signal. Nor will I get a signal if I place it on top. That's because the redstone does not run into those blocks. However, redstone will also provide strong power to the block below it. So, if I were to place blocks along the side here, they do get power, as you saw down there where I powered all of those things on that line. So blocks next to the block the redstone is on will receive power, just like that one there will. And then also below the line will receive power. Now, this is actually the strong power in this block, meaning that the blocks below it are weakly powered, like this. Just like in this circumstance, where this was strongly powered, then this was weakly powered, and then this was not powered at all. In the same way, this blue block is strongly powered, and this lamp is weakly powered, and then these are not powered at all. All right, so that is all the ways that redstone dust powers something, aside from something called quasi-connectivity, which we will ignore until later because it's more, uh, more advanced and uh, also only applies to the Java version of the game. Now, let's talk about how to power redstone dust. Redstone dust can be powered by strong power or pushing power. Now that is to say that if I leave this powered here and I, th this block is now strongly powered as you've seen before. I can show that by putting the lamp here and the next lamp and it's still on, which means this was a strongly powered. If this was a soft or a weakly powered, then I would place that block and you can see this is weak power. All right. So this is a strongly powered lamp, and if I were to place dust here, redstone dust will not receive power, or will, it will not receive weak power. It will only receive strong power and push power. So as I said before, since there's redstone dust running into this block where the redstone is about to be, it's receiving strong power, and it will be powered. Now as I've mentioned, there's three types of power, strong power, weak power, and push power. The redstone dust only emits strong and weak power, no, no push power allowed. The redstone torch and redstone repeater will emit some push power. So what that means is that 
uh, I can do certain things to get the power to pass through blocks using those. So let, let's hold off on that for just a moment and talk about uh, let's talk about the redstone torch first. So the most important property of a redstone torch is that it can turn off. So whenever you provide power to the block the redstone torch is on, like that, it will turn off. So by doing what I've just done here, I can power the block that the torch is on. It turns off the torch. And since the torch is powering this wire, it turns off the wire. And since this torch was powering the block, turning this torch off, once I've powered this and it's off, this block no longer receives power and this block turns on. You can use this to make large chains of vertical redstone so that this light will come on when I flick the lever, even though it's way up there. Let me get it a good angle for this. So I flick that, the light turns off. I flick it again and it turns on. All right. Now, uh, I didn't really mention the lever much yet. Uh, the lever, as it turns out, provides push power. So I can put down the lever here and it powers the redstone. I can put down the lever here and it pushes through the block and powers the redstone. I can also put the lever here and it pushes through this block and powers the redstone. Likewise, I can put it on top. So it makes this block strong enough to power a redstone. That's what push power does. It means the power will push through the block and into some dust. That does not mean it'll push through more than one block. I cannot power this block to power the redstone dust. Because once I've powered this block with push power, this block still gets a weak signal. Uh, it's sort of a weak signal. It's, it's re Really, it's a strong signal, really. But it's not a strong signal in that I won't get power to that lamp by powering this. So it's sort of, it's the property of push power, that it's sort of a cross between strong and weak. So that is what push power does. It pushes through the block to a redstone component, like dust. All right, so I mentioned that the redstone torch can turn off. Uh, also important to know with the redstone torch is that it can be placed on the side of blocks and the same effect will hold true. So if I place down the lever, I can turn off the redstone torch by running power into the block or alternatively oops, by taking my redstone and doing that or I can put my lever here notice it doesn't do anything there but if I place some dust there I can power the torch because I've powered the block that the torch is on strongly and then the torch turns off now, there's something rather interesting you can do with a redstone torch. If you place it on the side of the block and place a redstone dust on top, when I place a block on top of the torch, it is going to power itself. And what this does is it will create a very fast pulse, and then the torch will burn out because it is turned on and off too quickly. Watch. All right, so you've seen there the effect of a redstone torch burning out. If it pulses too quickly, it will burn out, and that's usually caused in this sort of a fashion. A quick block update will fix it and turn it back on. Now, one thing I neglected to mention earlier is what happens if you have a dot of redstone. Now, I've said already that if, if you place a torch underneath something, it'll power the block above it. And I can put redstone on top of it, and you see the redstone is powered. Just like the torches are powered on top here. Right? Because redstone torch provides push power above it, and it provides strong power to its sides. It will not provide push power to the side. Also worth noting, a redstone torch here will power the block below it. But again, it only provides push power upwards, so I do not get a signal like that. So, with the redstone dust here, the interesting property is that it will power every side as if it was running into all of them. So as where before, you could not power the sides because it was running in a direction. So redstone dots 
are not directional, whereas redstone wires are. This is very useful in a lot of settings, but we will get to that later. Now then, talking more about the redstone torch, I mentioned it provides strong power to the sides, push power above, yes, all right. You can see that's still powered, that's still powered, but that is not. But let's look at what happens when you have a redstone torch like this. As before, I mentioned you can not you can power below it, but it's not push power. It's still powered normally to the sides with strong power and push power to the top. All right. With all of that in mind, let's talk about the redstone repeater. With the redstone repeater, we can take our redstone signal, run it like this. Now, the redstone repeater, all it does is it turns on if its input is on, but it has a delay. So a redstone repeater will delay one to four redstone ticks. There are 10 redstone ticks in a second. And so one redstone repeater can delay between one tenth and one, or er, in four tenths of a minute. Sorry, of a second, not a minute. So, as you can see with four ticks, it takes four tenths of a second to turn on and off. All right. And like I said, all you have to do is right click and it changes this positioning. So that is one tick, two tick, three tick, four tick. Interesting properties of the redstone repeater are that it will accept weak power. So for example, I can run the redstone into this block, which again, it will normally do this, right? So this block will be unpowered. This block will be weakly powered. It will accept that weak power as full power. And likewise, a redstone repeater will emit push power. So here I have the repeater completely unconnected to any wires, but still functioning as if it were. So essentially, a redstone repeater can pull and push a signal. And this works rather well for a lot of tight spaces for, because the way it pushes and pulls that power is rather interesting. If I have my repeater here, we've already seen I can do this, and I can do this. Now I could also move this up like that. Uh, I cannot move it down though. This will not work. I cannot power the repeater in that fashion. Let's see, what else? Uh, I, the redstone repeater can only be powered from the back. So notice, no matter where I place these, the repeater is still not on. Only the back side will power it. And likewise, if I power it, uh, I have to be rather clever, there we go. If I power it here, it does not affect the wires on either side. Nothing connects to the side of a repeater. So, uh, as I was saying before, you can power it from here. It can also provide power in a number of interesting ways. We know it will power these, and we can also see that it will power like that. Now, interestingly enough, a repeater can actually power itself. So now if I remove this redstone torch, it stays lit because the repeater is receiving power from here, and it's outputting that power here and it will forever be on now. But if I break one of these wires, then the whole thing turns off and won't turn on again until I reset it. Now, uh, a repeater will not go up more than that. It will go down as well because it powers this block with push power and the redstone dust can receive it here. This is extremely useful. So let's look at a very 
quick example, real quick, of how to make some useful components out of this. We can take a redstone repeater, a block, a torch, and some dust. Now the repeater needs to be slowed down because if it's at full speed, it'll burn out the torch, like that. So if we slow it down a bit, that's odd. It's very odd. That was a weird bug. But as you can see, now it is pulsing and it is not burning out. So if it has at least two ticks delay on the repeater, this will work. It is worth noting that redstone torches also have a delay, uh, but calculating delay is much weirder with redstone torches. We're just looking at the basics here. All right, so this is a clock. It will just kind of run forever. It pulses on and off. Very useful in a lot of circumstances. And there are lots of ways to make clocks. For example, before there were repeaters in the game, you could make a clock using just redstone torches, because as I mentioned, I put that on. Redstone torches also have a delay to them. And so you can see that this one works much the same way. Now, uh, I believe there's one more thing we should talk about, which is the ability for a repeater to be locked. This is one of the more advanced uses of a repeater. If you face a repeater into another repeater's side like this, then when you power this repeater, it will lock this repeater. And that means that no change will occur in that repeater. That includes, and I'm going to go ahead and use levers so that you can see what's happening here. If I flick this lever, it powers and depowers the lamp as you'd expect. If I lock it, nothing happens. Now, if I lock the repeater while it's on, then it'll never turn off. And as I said, this has a variety of uses, but we're still in the basics and we're not gonna do much with this yet. So, we have seen a few of the ways that redstone can power the blocks around it, and how to work basic functionality with wiring. Let's make something very simple before we finish here. That way we have some sort of demonstration to show. Let's make a little doorbell maybe. I think that would be fun. So I'll just grab a couple of blocks and nope block. And if we put in our door frame here. Now, we need a few little tricks in order to make this work. There's no way for this button to power this block down here. So for simplicity's sake, let's put the button on the floor level. I should mention buttons work pretty much the same as levers, except that you don't flip them, you just press them once. Now, all we have to really do is put down a redstone dust right here. We need to put down a note block with no block above it because note blocks will not work unless there's air above them. Uh, and that's, let's actually, imp let's put them over air because note blocks change their sound based on what block is underneath them. And you can tune them by right clicking. All right, so this is a very simple doorbell because when we press the button, the door will open and it will make the sound. Now, again, this is very simple. I'm not using a lot of the things we did here, but it's a good little example of a basic redstone contraption. All right. I think this will do it for this episode. My name is Stellar the Great, and thank you for watching.